Dead Channel Duo episode number 57. How are you doing, Alexander? Doing pretty well, Andy. How are you? Fine. Just fine? Yeah. How was your Thanksgiving? Didn't have one. I mean, you don't have one at all. We just didn't have one this year. Really? Yeah. Your mom just doesn't seem like the type. She seems like My it's mom like doesn't we're cook. having... Oh, really? Ever. That's kind of shocking. Like in my entire life. I don't know. I just always envision her as the very... Because you're sexist. No, I just, you know, she seems, <laughs> she seems like very motherly and like the type that would want to cook and would want to have a big spread. And I don't know. She like she kind of reminds me of my mom, like when I see her on Twitter. Well, so I just... I she doesn't like, cook. Well, well, sorry to hear it, man. I fried a turkey. I mean, so. I don't like thanksgiving food oh i love it i love it man it's like it's kind of like a mini super bowl for me man like as a fat guy i, don't uh, know, I just eat ham and turkey well we like barely any nah That's i mean it. like we got it we had a pretty good spread this year we we fried a turkey ashley did her mac and cheese my mom made stuffing um my brother and my sister-in-law brought some other sides pretty good spread you should deep fry your turkey next year we do Oh, all right. We deep fry, yeah. Like I get a, I got a kit, and then um, we do a Cajun seasoning on the outside, and then we get um, injections, and we do injections into the turkey with the Cajun seasoning, and it comes out really moist, way better than putting it in an oven, and I can't go back to doing turkey in the oven. Like it, ju it just doesn't work. And if I wasn't gonna fry one, I'd probably uh, smoke one. I'd, I'd find a way to smoke one because it's a lot better if you do it that way. Anyway, um, it's been a pretty eventful week for me getting ready for that. Um, like Wednesday was nothing but preparation for Thanksgiving. And then, you know, I've been on that job search. But uh, Andy, what have you been watching and playing this week? Uh, watching. I watched. I, was, I split it up between movies and TV. Okay. Just because. Movies, Greener Grass. Elijah Schlesinger's stand-up special from 2013. Uh, Bikram, Yogi, Guru, Predator. Notes from Melanie, Little Monsters, The Beach Bum. Anthony Jeselnik's new stand-up. And it's not really new. It came out like a month ago or two. Or like, for, I don't know. It came out this year, though. Uh, Thanks Killing, Hustlers, uh, Meeting Gorbachev, which is a pretty interesting documentary mm -hmm. where uh, Warner Herzog interviewed Gorbachev. I watched High School Musical, absolute classic. Yeah. Uh, Pilgrim, and I watched The Irishman. And the TV-wise, The End of the Fucking World, Season 2, Bleep. It's the name of the show, sorry. Uh, Mandalorian and South Park. Well, there's a little bit of overlap for us. So, obviously, I watched Thanks Killing because that was the DCD Film Club selection this week. I don't know where I left off on Star Wars last episode. Um, so I apologize if I'm like repeating any, but, uh, watched episode four, five, six, and seven. You watched four. Last okay. Week. So I did, I did watch five. I was like, you didn't watch Rogue One and you're like, I don't know. No, not. I still haven't gone back to that one, but I did watch five, did watch six, um, and seven as well. Seven's, I guess the new, the start of the new trilogy, um, didn't really care for that one too much. My wife was pretty brutal on that one as well. I uh, watched AEW wrestling for the first time. I thought I'd point that out because I was pretty impressed with how good it was. Like, if I'm WWE, I'd be a little bit concerned because those guys are putting on a heck of a show every Wednesday night. So, um, watched that, really enjoyed it. Mandalorian, watched the first three episodes of that, thought it was just. It was really good. I, I actually enjoyed that more than episode seven. I'm not a Star Wars guy, so like, yeah, you know, that's our if, first topic, by the way. So oh, okay. So like, we'll if talk you about in a second. if you are a Star Wars guy and you disagree with me, you're you're probably right. I'm just I'm not really into that world. Like, I rewatched four, five, and six basically for the first time since I was a kid, and I haven't seen episode seven, and I saw. One, two, and three in in theaters. 
uh, I think one of them I watched on home release when I was a kid uh, in high school. You know, just rewatching them now for the first time. It's just it's not something that's like in the forefront. I'm more of a Star Trek guy. We've talked about that before, I think on episode three. Um, and then playing this week, uh, I've been playing a lot of world of Warcraft and Forza horizon four. That's about it. I, I actually think, I, I don't think I've touched Madden the entire month of November. So that's been pretty interesting. I don't miss it, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Moving on into no, I, I I also watched uh I'm watching Grandmaster Eric Hansen speed run to three thousand in chess. Okay. Which is pretty interesting. Yeah. And uh you're gonna turn your camera. Um so yeah. First yeah. topic was Mandalorian. What are you, what is your thoughts on it? Oh, that's the first topic? Yeah, because you were watching section. I wanted to throw oh. that at you. Okay, um, so I, I really want to get your thoughts on it as well. So, you know, obviously I'm only three episodes There's in. only three episodes. Yeah, out. so um, I think the fourth one came out today, which is the day yeah. we're recording it. So, like, I just, I always like to mention, like, I'm saying this three episodes in, so if you're listening to it later on, you know, and the whole thing's out, you know that I'm I'm only basing this off of three episodes. So, I really, overall, I thought it was really well done. Um, so I, as I said, I enjoyed it more than episode seven. And the reason why is it felt more like a modern, a modernized star Wars than maybe episode seven did. And that's just my take. And then I kind of like some of the aspects of it. So like the writing I think is really good. It always leaves you on a little bit of a cliffhanger, making you want to watch that next episode it always leaves you wanting more and i think that's a good thing for an episodic tv series to do like you look at the best eras in pro wrestling which is what i was talking about a couple minutes ago with aew you know every week there was something like man i can't wait to ha see what happens next week you know because something happened at the end of the show and the man and Lorraine does really well with that so i like the writing from the way they film it, the cinematography is really good. It's a little bit darker than like the color palette that they use is a little bit darker than what you would see in most Star Wars films, which I particularly enjoyed because space is kind of a dark place in general. It's not all bright and colorful and glitzy and glamorous. So I like the color palette they used. I like the, the costume design. Um, I really love that they never let the Mandalorian character take off his mask. I mean, that's the code they're not allowed to well i mean he broke the code in other ways spoiler oh he broke the the assassin's guild but he didn't break the mandalorian code. true but I, I mean my thing is this i would never take it off him i would never take that helmet off i look at it like like i look at dread yeah, man where like keep the helmet on it leave it leaves that aspect of mystique and a really just like a cool factor that I think that you would instantly lose if that helmet comes off. So, um, but I was really blown away by some of the shots. I, it, it really felt more like a Star Wars movie when, like, there's a lot of wide angle shots that show the geography of where they are. He's going to different places. Every episode, I get introduced to new places, new characters, new aliens I haven't seen before, new creatures I haven't seen before. I didn't really see a lot of that in episode seven, but if you go back, you watch episode four, five, and six, there's always something new, like Hoth in episode five. So many iconic scenes from that. You're introduced to all these new creatures, aliens. It, it, it's really cool when they do that. In episode seven, I feel like that was very minimized. Whereas with Mandalorian, it's, it's, they fit a lot in that 30 minutes. Um, Nick Nolte's great. Nick Nolte does the voice work for the, I have spoken guy and I love Nick Nolte, but I, I really didn't think he would be a good voice actor for star Wars. He proved me wrong. It, overall. I, I love it. I can't wait to watch the rest of it. Um, and I also know Bobby frequent listener of the podcast hates that people call the little green guy, baby Yoda, but I love baby Yoda. What else are you going to call him? I know baby species that Yoda happens to be the species of. Spoon Sandwich had the best suggestion that I hope latches on. I know it won't, but he said they should call him Baby Greenie. <laughs> just 
like just the most ridiculous name you could come up uh, off the top of your head. Andy, how how do you feel about it? Uh, I mean, it's cool. It's <laughs> it's a it. uh, it's yeah, it's a, it's a he like as you said, like he keeps his mask on. It's a western set in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, yeah I He's did get a lot of Clint Eastwood character. I did get a lot of western vibes from it. Like there were certain shots that kind of remind me of spaghetti westerns. And then the whole Baby Yoda thing, not to say specifically, I thought it was pandering, but then he actually did something, and there's <laughs> character development with there the... Is. Yeah. So it's actually not just pandering to the audience, which I thought it was in the beginning. Yeah, it's definitely not pandering. And Like whenever, like at the end of episode one, it just seems like, oh, yeah, but then he actually made it something, um, which is cool. It um, is, Werner it is Herzog. something that... Go ahead. Plays Warner Herzog plays the guy that gives him the mission, uh, which he's legendary film director, mm-hmm. which will probably eventually have him one of his movies on DCD Film Club. Um, I I like how something that I, you're like crapping on episode seven. I don't think episode seven's that bad, um, but it did something that this nothing in Star Wars has done before, where whenever the Force is used. Mm-hmm. The Mandalorian's like, I don't know what this is because it's set place where there's no Jedi's, and mm-hmm. then the character that you mentioned, I can't think of the. It's been forever since I watched the episode. The guy that helps out the Mandalorian. I know, I know who you're talking about. The I that have guy, spoken guy. Yeah, he's like, in all of Star Wars, you're either Jedi or Sith, and that guy's just like, I'm just chilling. I think he's a farmer or something. He's like, Yeah, I'm just trying to live. I don't want these people here. Shy, be peaceful, which I think is pretty cool. And then I'm, the I mean, music's also awesome because it's not like John Williams ripoff. Yeah, I'm not trying to crap on episode seven. I just, I just don't think it was very good. I, it fell flat. Kylo Ren's a terrible villain. He's not menacing at all. Once he takes that helmet off, I mean, Snoke's the villain until you watch the next episode. I mean, I get that, but my my point is Kylo Ren. And then they're like Kylo Ren's like push him heavy. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're gonna push him. So it felt like Han Solo's death. Spoiler for Episode Seven, if you haven't seen it. It already. was all over Twitter when I g- yeah. It came so out. I mean, I'm not spoiling anything, but I mean, I felt like that felt like a way to just get cheap heat on. Well, the Kylo original Ren, plan it didn't really well, mean anything. The whole thing of the trilogy is there's no plan because there's different directors for each one, mm. and they don't really like push them. Like how the Marvel movies, how they're so like go together is because even though there's a director on the project, there's John or what's his name is cut like over all of it and making everything hook together. And this trilogy, they didn't really do that. So, um, but like the theory is. I can't say this without really spoiling, but episode seven is Han Solo's episode, episode eight's Luke's episode, and episode nine is is Leia's episode. But unfortunately, you know, mm. yeah. I mean, J.J. Abrams is directing episode nine, and he he directed episode seven, so I have very low expectations because any, I. I I know somebody's going to, and you can email me at alex at deadchannelduo.com and tell me what an idiot I am, or you could tweet me, but I don't like what J.J. Abrams did with Star Trek at all from a visual standpoint, from a directing standpoint, and what he did with Star Wars, a franchise I that I don't care about he nearly he as really, much. He remade episode four. They're the exact same movie. They're not as good. I, I, I don't I, I don't think they're equitable at all. Like they're literally the exact same movie. Maybe in theme, but from a writing standpoint, from like beat to beat they're the same. Yeah. I mean I, I you know, like most things, like most films we watch, we're gonna disagree. I, I mean Usually I'm the more positive one when it comes to stuff. I I just I'm just I thinking it's ridiculous that you're it. hating on a movie made for children, which I do all the time. But like that's like the main criticism people say for episode eight is they're like, oh, it's really stupid. But mm-hmm. the whole movie is about pe- f- people that have the force. 
Okay. And they run around lightsabers. Okay, so fair... Mm, see, I'm not even going to agree with that. I don't think it's directly made for kids because if you look at episode the demographic... Episode 7, episode 8, and episode 9 definitely made for kids. Okay, and well... The, the second trilogy was made for kids. I I mean, I, I disagree because I watched them when I was a lot older than just being a kid. I watched I mean, them in high school. Yeah, I watched them as a young You adult. watch Avengers movies and they're also made for kids. All right. Well, I mean, I, I guess I, I, at some point the fan base grows up and I think that good, good IPs that's what, like, grow that's up what with the fan base. That's what the Mandalorian is. The Mandalorian is not made for kids. It's made for adults. That's why it's the only thing that's really Which good in I'm Star gonna, Wars. I'm, I'm going to disagree with that because if you're going to say that like it's it's rated PG, it only has violence in it. Disney yeah, Plus I mean, actually really puts it in Westerns. So. Disney Plus puts it under the family section, believe it or not. So like, I don't know. I, I, I think I have every right as someone, and I think people who are really dedicated to Star Wars, people that are probably in there, you know, people like my mom who saw Star Wars when she was in high school, you know, those people have a right, I think, as a fan of the series to say, hey, I don't like this. Yeah, I'm not I'm, saying I'm, it's the worst thing I've ever watched. I'm saying the people that are like their series is ruined after this it's single not, movie. It's not ruined. Because that's how most of them are. It doesn't ruin the old ones for me. I a mean, I'm not one of those Twitter, people. When episode 8 came out, they're like, it's all ruined. They ruined Star Wars. It's over. Well, I mean, it can ruin that trilogy. But I don't think it ever ruined. I mean, like, have you I, seen episode eight yet? No, I haven't. But so my, I can't say why it's ruined. Okay, but my my point in all of this is this: like, I, I I'm not, whatever. I I don't know. It, it, I'm I'm not saying it ruins the entire franchise. That's such a that I hate when people say that. I also hate when people say they're ruining my childhood. You can go back and watch that old stuff anytime. It's still there. No, you, you know? can't. Not Star Wars. They changed it. Well, they did change a lot. I didn't like. <laughs> you can't go back and watch. So it, when actually. I when I watched episode six, I noticed that George Lucas threw in some very um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it was did very you... obvious that he had thrown in extra scenes right after yeah. Darth Vader's death, and I think it actually takes away from the movie rather than adds to it. And the reason I say that is because the way the the way it was originally written, it you, it evoked more emotion than throwing in these random celebration scenes right afterwards. It just it doesn't that doesn't work for me. But there's like a there's a controversy with like the Han Greedo thing because yeah they added it's been edited three times. It was like it Han has. shot first, then Greedo shot first. And now Greedo says something, mm -hmm. and it's really dumb. But like that's George Lucas' thing. It's not just the Star Wars thing. His original movie THX one one three eight. Like mm -hmm. what you watch now is completely different than the original cut. No, you're right. Which is just stupid. Just leave it alone, George. Yeah, I mean, but some people like to tinker. Anyway. Um, moving on to listener questions. That was a good topic. We got a lot out of that one. Um, listener questions this week. Cuban Swim on Twitter, a.k.a. Bobby, asks... This is actually a really good question. I, I, I had to look up all these uniforms to try and figure out which one I liked the least. What is your favorite NBA City alt uniform, and what's your least favorite? Andy, I'll let you lead off. I mean, I have multiples because that's how I am. Uh, It was hard to pick just one. Favorite, technically, it's not a city jersey, so I'm not going to give it to it. My favorite alt jersey is the Grizzlies, throwback Vancouver Grizzly jerseys. Ooh, those are good. Um, but the favorite overall is probably the Nuggets, which is kind of cheese because it's the same as last year, but white instead of black. Mm. Um, the Nets one are pretty cool if it didn't say, it says like Ben Soy on it or something like that. If it just said Brooklyn, it's just the biggie jerseys again, but white. Can you tell um, me what the Ben story is? It's a means? neighborhood. I don't, I, that's not what it says. It says something like that. I don't remember. It's something like that, but it's a neighborhood in Brooklyn. I thought it said B E N S T U Y. Bed. No, it's B E D. Bed Stoy. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's like a neighborhood in Brooklyn, I think. Oh, okay. Or something like that. I didn't really look into it. Um, Worst ones. 
are the Mavericks and the Celtics are just atrocious. Yeah, I I mean I agree with your picks. I I think that those two are kind of weird. Um my favorite even though I can't stand the team, I think the Miami ones are are just by and far yeah. the best. Uh honorable mention you know, Blazers are amazing. I love the Nuggets because it brings back that old school logo that I loved as a kid. Um, I have one of those old school jerseys. It's a Kimbe Matumbo one. Yeah, I mean, it, those are those are iconic jerseys, and I no, I, I have an them. Allen Iverson one. Sorry. Oh, that's a good one too. It's a good. Which one. he played um, like fourteen games for the Nuggets, which is funny. Yeah, so like I I liked those two, and then uh, one final one that I just I felt like I had to mention was the the Wizards. I I really liked the Wizards one. Now, as far as the least favorite, um, I know the Mavs one is pretty tough. I I, I don't, I'm not even saying it's good. Uh, the one oh, that's that, gross. Yeah, and, and the Boston one's pretty gross too. The one that I really just couldn't stand was the Chicago Bulls one. The yeah, the powder the, blue. Know. And then another that one right? that I'm sure some people really like it, but I thought it just looked like a jumbled mess was the Spurs. I mess mean, there it's every year they wear that. Yeah, so I mean, but I, I just thought by and far the Bulls one was was just the worst. I, you know, the other factor that we're not really talking about here is you know, they do change the court. And sometimes the court makes the jerseys look a little bit better because they match. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how much you could do to save that Mavs one. <laughs> Toronto's <laughs> also good. The OVOs. It's a pretty good but one, too. Yeah. Anyway. Ones I didn't mention that I like are the the uh, the Jazz because it's the same one every year. Yeah. I mean, I always like the jazz uniforms in general. I don't think the jazz have ever had a bad uniform that I didn't like, but purple is one of my favorite colors. So yeah. Alex. Yeah. Will miles Garrett face assault charges and end up in jail from Bob again? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Mason it Rudolph said he already. wasn't going to, yeah, he says he's not going to file charges and I don't even remember where that game happened. Was it in Cleveland? And I think the local PD said it happened like, on ESPN. Yeah, but the the local police department said they weren't going to do anything if Mason Rudolph didn't file charges. And I mean, he's I mean, not. You can't. It, I mean, can, can you? I don't think you can do anything if they don't file charges. No, I mean, I think it has to be. I think if it's a felony in most states, they could charge you anyway. Like a federal felony. Yeah. Yeah. But like you, if it's something that's like a misdemeanor, usually, especially something like assault, you have to have a willing, um, def I guess plaintiff, you know, to go against that defendant. And I just don't, I don't even think it's necessary. I, I, I think that like the, the financial punishment Miles Garrett is going to go through is worse than, any sort of minimal jail sentence that he would do, or like he probably wouldn't even get a jail sentence. He'd probably just get probation or community service or, or something like that. Because like with something like assault, Mason Rudolph didn't suffer any permanent injuries. So it's going to be really tough to get a yeah, judge. I mean, to... CD. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but like, it, it's just going to be really tough to get a, a judge to throw the book at him. But, um, you know, I think that the financial punishment is the worst because, like, not only is he not getting game checks for all those games, I don't know if anybody's going to want Miles Garrett as a spokesperson or, a, like, is going to want to sponsor him. I mean, people for, forget about it. For a while. Well, I mean, it takes a while for those things to go away. I mean, so, Ray Lewis literally murdered someone. He's on the top 100 team. Well, there we go. Uh, Probably. <laughs> Alex. Thoughts on Elizabeth Banks' comment saying Charlie's Angels was a box office bomb because men don't go see it? Female-led action movies? Or, or Sorry, men don't go see female-led action movies. 
Mm. Any examples of ones you saw and enjoyed in theaters from Daniel, otherwise known as The Reasons I'm Broke, on Twitter? Uh, I mean, so what I would point to, shockingly enough, would be the previous iteration of the Charlie's Angels movies, the ones with uh, Cameron Diaz and uh, Drew Barrymore. You know, I think those did pretty well. Um, I I went and saw those when they were in theaters. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Charlie's Angels, the first one, 2000, did 264 million against a $93 million budget. So people saw that. I saw it in theaters. I thought it was okay for what it was. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be like a an amazing. Um, I mean, it was the twelfth highest grossing film of two thousand. So I mean, it, it did all right. I don't know about how the sequel did. I remember vaguely watching that one, but I don't really remember much about it. Um, let me take a look here. That actually did really good too. It did two fifty nine million against a hundred twenty million dollar budget. So. I, I mean, your own series disproves you. There is some point to it. Like, you know, I remember Aeon Flux was kind of a, a, a real box office bomb, um, which was a cool... If you know anything about Aeon Flux, the cartoon from the 90s, it, it's a cool character. And it had, um you know, good actress in it, Charlize Theron. But... You know, it didn't do very well. Alita Battle Angel didn't do as well as they wanted it to. You know, I, I think, you know, maybe there is a little bit of truth to that. But I think in today's SJW culture and, you know, I, I think people go see stuff like that. Um, but then at, at the same time, like I look at the, the Dark Phoenix movie that bombed. So maybe she has a point. Okay, I don't know. Really I bad. feel... Well, it it also had a campaign of people telling people don't see it so that we get X Men in the MCU, even though that has nothing I mean, to do with anything. It one, it came out on the wrong side of the year. It came out early in the year. Yeah, where generally bad movies come out. Um, for Dark Phoenix, I don't know. Why I'm really saying this, but for Charlie's Angels, you also have to factor in the competition. It opened up against Ford versus Ferrari, which is one of the bigger movies of the year. Mm. Um. I mean, I personally have no interest in watching it, and I think that it's kind of people are tired of watching remakes mm -hmm. constantly, which is all Hollywood does now. Everything is attached to something beforehand. Yeah, I I mean, I just, I think overall, there's a little bit of truth to it. Are, are there, and by the way, I, I misspoke. Alita Battle Angel did pretty well. It, I mean, it, it probably wasn't a massive profit, but it, it didn't lose money. I, I just think, like, while there's kernels of truth to it, I don't, I don't think it's a good look to say, like, that's the only reason my movie failed. And it's just you know, childish. Yeah, and, you know, Captain Marvel did good. <laughs> I hate that I'm using Captain Marvel. I hate talking superhero movies. I really do. But Captain Marvel didn't do good compared to the other Avenger movies because it's a woman. <laughs> nah, I mean, they pushed it. It's not like it came out bef between, like, Endgame and no one cared about it. Eh. Because it's retroactively putting stuff in the universe. I don't care who you are. You know, and I know there's the conspiracy theories out there that Disney was buying tickets and and artificially inflating numbers, but I, I don't know if there's any proof to that, and I really don't care to research it. But, you know, I mean, Captain Marvel right now is listed as doing $1.128 in the box office. So, I mean, obviously, somebody went and saw it. I, I just, I think that if you come up, and I'm not saying Captain Marvel is this, but if you come up with something compelling and original, I think people are willing to go see it and you know to go back to elite battle angel there's a massive movement right now it's kind of become a cult classic of people who are buying multiple copies of the blu-ray and giving them to their friends one person i saw bought 40 copies of the blu-ray and hid them around their city in a scavenger hunt on twitter 
just trying yeah, to, to help the, the sales. There's like people that went to see it every single day when it was in theaters. Well, there you go. I mean, it's it's somebody supporting this. So if you make something compelling and new and original like Alita Battle Angel or even Captain Marvel to pay, play devil's advocate, people will go see it. But I don't know that anybody was really just dying for another Charlie's Angels movie. I mean, I Captain even, Marvel isn't new. I mean, there's... Well, yeah, I know, but... It was it, already in the universe, but... It felt new, though, right? It felt new. It felt like something that you really hadn't seen a lot of before. Alita Battle Angel was something new yeah, that that's you haven't seen new. before. I think I, there could be comics, but I don't know because I don't care. Well, no, there's... A, I mean, it's based on, you know, manga and an animated series, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I knew that, actually. But there's, yeah, nothing, there's nothing live action, you know, out there for it that I know of. It's never been on the big screen, is what I'm saying. So, like, Charlie's Angels, it's kind of, like, been there, done that. I also don't know if that name has much meaning to younger people. I think there's a lot of younger... Like, if I ask my sister, who's 20, what do you know about Charlie's Angels? She she wouldn't know anything about it. She's just not the right age. I don't know. I think it's kind of a cop-out. Of an argument. Yeah. I mean, there's the same thing like the Ghostbusters female remake. But then you have movies like Pitch Perfect and Bridesmaids that do well. Well, it's, there you go. You can't you pick a side. Uh, to answer the second half of the question, movie you've seen female-led. It says female-led action. Mm. Um, I didn't see the action part. I don't know. Uh, personally, because I don't watch that many action movies or seek them out, because I'm just like desensitized to it. And I don't really like. I don't see like, oh, it's a cool action scene. That never really happens to me. Yeah, like, that could be a reason why I didn't like Dread that much. Yeah, I mean, I but would female. Go ahead. Female led movies. Um, Book Smart came out this year. It's a comedy. It's really good. Mm. Lady Bird from two years ago, directed by female. It's really good. And Book Smart's directed by female. So. They're both really good. Um, Midsummer, I guess, is led by a female. That one's really, really good. Um, Hustlers came out recently. Not really an action movie, as mm. I said, but it's, it's pretty good. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would again go back to the original, those first two Charlie's Angels movies from the two thousands. I saw those in theaters and enjoyed them. Again, I realize they're not classic cinema or anything, but they were they were cool action movies. I have my letterbox open, and uh, <laughs> the Tomb Raider movie is complete garbage and it's female led. I actually, the like Raider those. Bad. That's a good example. I, I kinda, no the new Tomb Raider. Oh, um, the old ones. Yeah, the old ones with Angelina Jolie were pretty good. Um, again, for what they were, they're not classic cinema or anything. Alien. Or aliens. Perf boom. There you go, Andy. That's a good one. That's a that's a great one. Um and then, you know, I, I mentioned Alita Battle Angel. That was that was good. Uh I remember Aeon Flux being good, but I have to go back and watch it. Uh Hereditary had a female <laughs> yeah, kinda I sorta. Mean, it's not action. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing around. Um I mean, you know, Action movies with a female lead, I can't really think of too many more. But I checked all my letterbox and I went to genre action and there's like nothing. But also it's because, I, as I said before, I don't watch action movies or seek them out. She wasn't the lead, but I watched this this past week. I forgot to mention it. And I forgot how good this movie was. Batman Returns. Michelle Pfeiffer was as close to a lead as you could get being Catwoman in that movie. And I, I really liked that one. I watched the Halle Berry Catwoman movie. That wasn't very good. It's sick, bro. Uh, next question. <laughs> What's your kind of pillow, i.e. feather, foam, etc. Mm. And how many pillows do you sleep with? I don't sleep with pillows. That's gay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about that because I see a I see a pillow in the background. No, so. it, no are you trying to tell us something? Answer, Andy? Answer, six, six pillows. Really? Six. Even though you see two, most of them are like tucked in the side, 
of the wall. What the hell do you do with six pillows? Well, I have, I have, like three of them supporting the white one. Oh, like, like on the bottom, and they're like kind of like jammed right here. And typically, I have one like right here. I put my laptop on. Mm. But like, if you're like talking about like my head's touching, then two. But there's six on the bed. Yeah. I. But I don't sleep with them because you know. I'm I also can't... not a woman. I can't really, you know, rub up against it and find any pleasure. Yeah, I can't. I can't do <laughs> feather pillows. They just don't work for me. So I have a foam pillow. It's pretty good. Um, I recommend. I would tell people this. Two investments you can make for yourself as an adult that will pay immediate dividends. Get yourself good pillows and get yourself a good mattress. Because Spend one third of your life on it. Yeah. I mean, like we recently upgraded our mattress and it's been a huge boost for me um, from an energy standpoint. But yeah, I use a I use like a memory foam pillow. Um, probably go through about one a year. I'm pretty rough on them. I go through them pretty quick, a lot quicker than most people. They kind of go flat for me. I guess I have a big head. That's what Ashley tells me. And um, yeah, I mean, you're supposed to replace them often. Like people don't replace their pillows as often as they're supposed to. Yeah, you you know, I, I like I said, I feel like I go through about one a year. It might be more frequent than that. But, um, you know, I got the, the heavy duty zipper case and then the actual, you know, um, pillowcase that goes over it. Um, same thing with sheets. Get yourself some good sheets, especially if you're single, you might bring a lady home. Those good sheets. It, uh, it helps that action get going a little bit faster anyway. Um, and then how many pillows I sleep with. I, I only use one. I only use one. It's a big one. Like it's a king, it's a king size pillow, but it's, it's just the one. Cause I, any more than one and like, it's too much support. My neck is like crooked, but, uh, in my earlier days before I was smart about this stuff, I would get like the, the cheap Walmart pillows that go flat after a week. And I'd have to use like two or three of those to, to actually get an, enough neck support. I can't believe that we're talking about pillows on a podcast. I wonder if there's like a dedicated pillow podcast. I feel like there's a podcast for everything now. I don't know. <laughs> don't know. I saw a podcast that was completely based on women talking about sexism in our society. And I was like, after a while, don't you just like run out of stories? There's a podcast where they watch Paul Blart's Mall Cop every year and review it every single year on the same day. Really? Yeah. Like, it's one episode a year. <laughs> Each year they watch Paul Blart's Mall Cop and review it. All that money for podcast hosting, just to do that, that's that's insane. Um, anyway, moving it, on to Colby's question here from Twitter, at Colbster409 on Twitter. He says, if there was a sequel to Absence of Malice, would you watch it? No. I'd watch it just because I want to see what happened. I feel like the, the finale didn't I don't didn't remember really the ending. So, so I remember like, it just being a complete boring trash movie. I feel like at the end, like we really don't get an answer who killed the guy. So like, if you want to do a sequel that tells me who killed the guy, but can we just make it like half an hour? Cause I don't want it to be really long. Just you know? a short film. Yeah. Keep it short. There's a short film of the guy being like, of Paul Newman, I think's the lead. Yeah. Like, yeah. That guy killed him. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I know I said I didn't, but I did it. Uh, anyway. We spent 40 minutes on listener questions. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know. Well, we talked a lot about Star Wars for like 13 yeah. minutes, which I honestly, I never thought that we would get 13 minutes out of us talking but about Alex, Star Wars. Yeah. I'll throw a random bad question at you just for fun. Yeah. It's a short one. Okay. Rank these five shows. Family Guy, Simpsons, King of the Hill, South Park, Futurama. Uh, okay. So I want to be really clear. This is my ranking, not what I think people like the most. So number one would be King of the Hill by far. Um, number two would be the Simpsons. 
I know everybody says Simpsons are dead. They've been dead for a long time. But I think that the first really 17 or 18 seasons of The Simpsons were really good from what I remember. After that, I put Family Guy. Uh, Futurama would be next. And then what was the, the South last? South Park. Okay, so I'm going to put South Park above Futurama. So I have I have South Park just below Family Guy. And that one kills me because I love South Park too. But um, they're all great. Yeah, I feel bad all... putting Futurama at five because I've watched every episode of Futurama. You're going to hate me for it. this one. Yeah. Uh, Family Guy 1. Mm-hmm. South Park 2. Okay. King of the Hill 3. All right. Futurama 4. Mm-hmm. And Simpsons 5. I don't hate you for that. That's fair. Just for the Simpsons part. Like, I remember when I went to school, like, as a kid, you know, Simpsons was in its infancy. God, that makes me feel old. But I remember I would go to school and I'd be like, oh, man, did y'all see the new Simpsons last night? And there'd be a few kids who were like, yeah, I just don't like the Simpsons. Like, it's not for everybody. You know, some people just don't like it as much. The hate, or like, the thing you said about the Simpsons is the same with Family Guy. Like, Family Guy sucks now. Nah, I like it still. Ever since the whole Brian died thing, it's been pretty trash after that. Mm, I don't know. I, you know, people say that about, you know, every single one of these shows has had that said about them because they all lasted a significantly long time. Like, I don't know about South Park, but I may not be old enough to know. People still say South Park isn't as good now as it used to be. It just people say like, Futurama isn't as good as it used to be when it was on Fox. I think that's the the line people draw in the sand. People said King of the Hill got stale. Never got stale for me. Those last couple seasons, believe it or not, were were kind of the best for me. I I love King of the Hill though. But or B Man's gonna be mad at us. Uh, DCD Film Club. Why? Why would he be mad at us? Are you I, ranked at one. I ranked at number one, so we're we're yeah, good. Never mind. Me and B Man are good. DCD Film Club this week was your pick. Yep. Take it away. Yep. Thanks, Killen. Made in two thousand eight by film students on a budget that I think was three thousand dollars. Thirty five hundred. They, they admittedly put almost the entire budget into the turkey. The, the puppet uh, directed by Jordan Downey written by a bunch of the people that acted in it. It's, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it's, this is, this was like kind of a passion project uh, that passion. Well, I mean, they did it for kind of a project, right? I mean, that's, that's the way I, I seem to remember it. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna call it like a pa- like a passion project to me is like something like someone's like I've been wanting to make this movie for like 20 years, mm-hmm. and I'm putting my heart and soul into it. Well, but I guess passion project is like making it for fun. That makes sense. So it it says here that it was purposely made bad by the yeah. director. Isn't it obvious? Yeah. It's I a mean, uh what are they called? They're like the asylum movies. Yeah. Where there's movies made purposely bad to be mm-hmm. good. To me, this is the Freddy Got Fingered of horror movies. It's a ridiculous premise with ridiculous action scenes. And then the production, um, for the budget, it's pretty good. I, I mean, the acting's terrible, but I think it's almost purposely supposed to be that way. I just it's purposely bad across the board. I just bust out laughing watching this all the time. The the turkey with the one liners are great. The the idea that. It's a turkey that was like brought to life by a shaman or something. Like it, it explains it all in the movie. I, it's so good. I, you know, it's it's so bad. It's good. It, it's seventy minutes long. Um, I, admittedly, I picked this because it's you know Thanksgiving this week, and I just wanted to do something Thanksgiving related. 
and I I watch this. Me and Ashley watch this every single year in the house around Thanksgiving, and it's just it's a guilty pleasure. I think it's an example of you can make something purposely bad that people still enjoy. Um, and I, I love the work that they did on the Turkey model. It's actually pretty good. Um, but like I said, acting's terrible writing. It's a ridiculous premise, but they somehow make it work. And, uh, yeah, Andy, let's, let's get your thoughts on it. Did you see my letterbox review? I saw you gave it five stars, I think. Yeah. I think you messed up. So my opinion on the movie is, uh, I think it's complete garbage. I don't think it's funny. I think it's (laughs) awful. I think it's a piece of trash. Uh, it's good under one condition. If you're at a party and you're drinking and you're just like, if you're riffing, about the movie, mm. I, I guess is the only way to make it good. From from like actual reviewing, critiquing it as a movie itself, I think it's awful. It's not funny. I think that they're trying to be bad to make it good. Thing isn't like the room is bad. It's so bad it's good mm. because like Tommy Wiseau is like passionate and he's actually thinking he's making a good movie. Like mm. Birdemic is like that too. Like, they're not purposely making it bad. They're putting their heart and soul into it, and it just happens to be bad. Hmm. It's the, like, mockbuster movies. That's what I was thinking about earlier. Like, Sharknado. It's hmm. so bad, it's supposed to be good. It's not, though. It's just... It's just bad. I don't think it's funny. The acting is horrid. And uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I didn't watch it all. Because, I mean, I've seen it before. I've seen it's, it before, it's so just, I, I like, know what happened. To, to me, that's like cheating. I can't believe that. I turned it off like 50 minutes in. Oh, my God. What's the point? The last third of the movie is the best. I mean, I know what happens. I've seen oh, it before. Whatever. But, yeah. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know watching the movie was optional. I told you for... Uh, American Psycho, you can skip it because you're busy and you've already seen it. No, I watched it. And and, and it to... completely doesn't take away from my review because I, I didn't rewatch it. I watched most of it. It's not like I didn't watch it in total. Not a fan of this. Not a fan of this in the least. Fine, I'll, I'll watch all of Man of Steel. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what to believe anymore. I don't know what's real on this show. <laughs> this is literally the only Wait. movie I've ever stopped watching. I watched all of Absent in the Malice, and I s- snored my way through it. Mm. I watched all of Freddy Got Fingered. It's not like I'm not watching the movie. It's I've seen yeah. the movie before. I know what happens, and I don't like it. I I don't know, man. I I think it's it's kind of cool for what it is. Um, like I said, I mainly picked it because you know I thought it was funny. And it was a Thanksgiving theme movie that somebody could watch in 70 minutes, like quickly get through it. Uh, I will tell you the sequel is not very good. Um, it kind of loses some steam and it loses a lot of its charm. I know Andy's going to say it doesn't have any charm, but like for me, it did. Uh, oh, I like the whole bit. It's called Thanks Killing 3 because there's no thanks on it too. Yeah, I There's mean, no second one. Yeah, they they made a few. No, they only made two a, movies. They made a few good jokes in three, and I own I own both. Um, you get both on Vudu for I think nine ninety nine. They sell a bundle where you get both of them. So, you know, if you're out there and you enjoyed this, you want to buy it for yourself. You know, go ahead, man. Knock yourself out on Vudu. I mean, I'm crapping on it, but like, I don't know, it's like Thanksgiving. It's or thanks. It's like Trick or Treat. Yeah. Where, like, like Dumbest Finks didn't really like Trick or Treat. He didn't like this as well. Well, yeah, he gave it half a star. Um, They're both... The way we're reviewing it doesn't give the movie how you're supposed to watch it. Mm. Like, if you're... It, the best way to watch this movie is, like, during a thanks... Or I guess Friendsgiving. It wouldn't really work with the family. Mm-hmm. Where, like, everyone's drinking and having a good time, and it just happens to be on. So I'll tell you how I got introduced to this. I... I know he doesn't listen to the show, but a um, friend of mine, Lester, Sean is his first name, but we just call him Lester. 
he uh he would invite me and Daniel over from the reason I'm broke to his we know Daniel yeah so he he'd like invite us over to his condo and he'd be like okay so we're doing a bad movie night everybody gets to pick a movie and he's kind of like a best of the worst yeah he picked this I don't remember what Daniel picked maybe Daniel picked this and I don't remember what I picked I just remember we went over one night and we watched this and then we watched Leprechaun from the hood or Leprechaun in the hood whatever it's called the, the first one yeah, so like we we just had a hell of a time um, watching this as part of a bad movie night, and then I introduced it to Ashley, and we kind of watched it in the same fashion, like it's a bad movie night movie, and I think it's successful on that front. And you know, I mean, the sense of humor it's not going to be for everybody, but hope you liked it. If you hated it, you can send me an email. Alex at deadchannelduo.com dot com, or you can tweet me and tell me how much you hated it. I'd love to hear it, or leave it in the YouTube comments. That's that's good too, because I I do read those. So, um, Andy, out of ten, ten out of ten, bro. I love what Letterbox says. Give it a real rating, man. Come on, a one out of ten. Yeah, yeah. I I I actually, I'm pretty rough on this one. I I actually give it a two out of ten. I realize it's not a good film. No, he gave Freddy got fingered a four. <laughs> I think Freddy got. I think Freddy got fingered is. So here's why I like Freddy got fingered. I think more. Freddy got fingered says something about the state of the movie industry at that time. Like it was, it was a, it was the world's greatest practical joke. I'm gonna get a budget for a movie. And then I'm going to turn the movie industry on its head and make something just completely stupid, awful, and dumb that that ticks people off. And in a way, it's me laughing at the state of the movie industry. Whereas Thanks Killing, it's it's like cheap heat. Like we're going to make something bad that people hate, but that's really all there is to it. I think it's I I still enjoy it. Um. But I mean, I know it's not. Again, as, as I've said a billion times on this show, I know it's not classic cinema. So, anyway, next week, moving on from that. So excited! <laughs> you know, um, I know I vaguely mentioned this, and I mean, we're not going to make the rule, obviously, but like. I know at one point I had kind of like insinuated maybe we have a rule where we don't cover superhero movies at all in DCD Film Club. There is there is one rule that's a secret rule that I haven't announced because it has been broken. But this movie being picked does ruin a bunch of different movies. That I won't I won't tell anybody the rule until it happens. I don't even know what the rule is. So how is it a rule? It's it's just it, when it happens it happens. I don't know. Um, I, I guess we'll see. But yeah, like I, I'm. I mean, I could tell you the rule. I guess. Sure, let's go with the rule. Because I wanted to, I wanted to like be like. I wanted you to pick a movie that broke the rule, and then be like, "Oh man, you did it," and be like a whole. Like I, I obviously we would still have reviewed it. What What was the rule? You can't pick the same director twice, so we can't just spam Kubrick movies, and spam. Movies like that. Oh, we I haven't was, had the same director twice a single time. Oh, no. I was going to break that rule because I was going to pick Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is completely... It, uh, we can't, we, if the sour cut comes out, we can't watch it. Wait, what? This is directed by Zack Snyder. Oh, it was? Oh, it was. Yeah, I remember that now. Okay. So, 300... Is a Snyder cut, all that. It's not a thing anymore. It's um so I saw this in theaters. I saw Man of Steel in theaters, and I actually purchased this movie when it was on sale for four ninety nine on Voodoo. Cause they had the four K version for four ninety nine, and I said, Well shoot, I'll never beat that. But um I didn't I never went back and rewatched it. I guess I'll rewatch it now. I, I remember liking it. And I'm not like, I just, I'm so tired of 
the superhero movie debate and like I don't want to be a part of it and like I'm more like I'm almost scared to review anything superhero related because I realize how divisive it is like it's incredibly divisive and people get like really ticked off over it if you don't like something or if you do like something or if you do like this thing and not that thing so like I was kind of like I don't know but um from like a like a personal standpoint I don't mind reviewing Man of Steel because I like Superman so past podcast with Becca Deffer what do you mean you could, I mean, I think Superman's a boring character, and I think you said that on a podcast recently. Well, no, I was saying he's boring to a lot of people because he's kind of like that white meat baby face in wrestling. Like, he's just, like, he's too safe. And I, I do understand yeah, I there's, there's like, darker moments to Superman. Like, so, for example, if you go to Death of Superman, and then there's the the rise of the, the Superman that come right after that, there's, like, a little bit of... um has a little bit more edge to it, but like you look at like the Superman cartoon on WB and like the movies from the eighties and a lot of the comics, not all of them, but a lot of the comics, like they kind of, you know, Superman's kind of that white meat baby face. He's sort of the all American boy. That isn't the all American boy. He's kind of like Spider-Man in a way. Like, Spider-Man is the same way in, in a lot of the comics until the 90s. When Spider-Man's relatable, though. He is. like Because, like, I remember when yeah, I was... A, do you relate to Superman at all? Are you a... No. But, <laughs> I mean, like, like Spider-Man, like, even in the 90s when I was reading those comics, like, I want to say it was... Amazing Spider-Man. He was pretty clean cut. He He would very rarely do anything that was, like, breaking the rules... But I want to say it was Marvelous Super Spider-Man, or maybe it was Marvelous yeah. Spider-Man or Ultimate Spider-Man that came out, oh. and he was kind of like a little edgier, and like things, you know, he yeah, he'd, no, he'd that's, be willing that's to... Spider-Man three. No, I'm talking about the Venom suit, <laughs> I'm talking about com- and I'm trying to remember stuff that I read in the '90s, which is tough for me you to can, do at this point. You can watch Men of Steel on YouTube, Amazon. Google Play, Voodoo for three ninety nine or iTunes for five ninety nine. Well, I'm looking forward to it because I like Superman, so I'll, I'll have fun. But um, if anybody gets mad, you know, just send your hate in the YouTube comments. I feel anyway. bad for Sphinx. Why? He he hasn't liked like a he hasn't liked a film club movie in a while. He didn't like Fear and Loathing. He didn't like Thanks Killing. I'm pretty sure he didn't like the thing before that. I don't think he'll like this. I know I didn't like Apocalypse Now, so yeah, that's what it was before Fear yeah. and Loathing was Apocalypse Now. Sorry, Sphinx. Um, <laughs> I'll rig the poll. No, I'm just kidding. He liked he liked American Psycho, so yeah. Uh, well, yeah, American Psycho is good. I mean, you know, I, I stand by what I said on that. Like, it's not for me, but I realize it's good. It's good. It it's good for most people. I just don't really. I don't get it. Um, but. Well, it's not get. that I don't get it. It's just, you know, I it doesn't <laughs> I don't relate to it, but a lot of people do. And you know, I was actually pretty um impressed there were multiple people who commented on YouTube about American Psycho who gave me new perspectives on it that were um I think it was Chetty who said something about it and I'm like, "You know what? Like that's kind of a new way of looking at it and it makes sense." So, you know, I I miss that. But it's good. Anyway, I think it- I don't know. Never mind. Next topic. Do you think Jason Garrett gets fired, coaches out of his current contract, or resigns with the Cowboys? Yeah, I put this topic on there because I want to get your take. So we were talking a lot in my Discord about Jason Garrett last night. Obviously, they lost pretty handily to the Buffalo Bills. A lot of people are blaming coaching. I don't think that coaching is always the problem, but you know, Cowboys fans seem pretty convinced Jason Garrett isn't the answer. His contract is up after this year. Yeah, getting that clap going. Um, so I wanted to ask you, um, my personal take is it's his le- it's the last year of his contract, right? So when he finishes out this year, they don't have to re-sign him. I think, in my opinion, he's going to finish out the year. They're going to see what happens, and he'll he'll hit the open market, and he probably doesn't get re-signed. 
unless they make a playoff run, which I think at this point we can all agree is very unlikely. What do you think, Andy? Do you think he gets fired in the uh, middle yeah, of the I season? I this on the original, like, old school episodes of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Lincoln Riley's the next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I agree with you. And I don't but, think he resigns. Oh, so okay. Will he, he get fired? There's no point in firing a coach at this point in the season. I I feel like it's almost a There's detriment. There's no good that could come out of firing a coach at this point in the season. Yeah, it's too early. Or it's too or late, too rather. late in the season. I'm sorry. It's too it's too late. Unless you have like Unless your plan moving forward is to promote Kellen Moore to head coach, which I think is too early for him to move to head coach because mm, it's his first year as a coordinator. No way. no way. Like, unless you have that route, like, pave the way. Like, hypothetically, like, Robert Sala for the 49ers, he's a guy that's about to get a head coaching job pr- probably soon. Mm. And, like, hypothetically, they wanted to fire Shanahan. It would make sense if you fired him and just move. Like, if that was already your plan... But yeah. since they don't have a guy like that, it's just stupid. Fair point. So, moving on to NFL Week 13 picks. So, we're recording this after Thanksgiving. Um, and, Andy, keep me honest on this. I picked Bears, Cowboys, Saints. You yep. picked Bears, Bills, Saints. Yep, I went 3-0. and Yeah, so... And he went 3-0 on Thanksgiving. Sadly, I went 2-1. and one. Um, So we're going to do the rest of the picks for this week right now. So, Andy, I'll let we you lead off, man. 4-7 and seven New York Jets at the 0-11 Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> what a stinker. We're both going with the Jets. Uh, the 5-6 five- <laughs> and six Cleveland Browns against the 6-5 and five Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to go Cleveland here because I don't really have much faith in the Steelers quarterback situation right now. We have the 8-3 and three Green Bay Packers coming off a great game, super competitive game against the 49ers. Really kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. At the 2-9 and nine New York Giants, I'm going to go with the Packers. I feel like it's a must win for them because the Vikings are right on their tail. So, yeah, I'm going Packers. We have the six and five Tennessee Titans at the six and five Indianapolis Colts. Go with the Colts. I'm gonna go Titans. The five and six Philadelphia Eagles against the two and nine Miami Dolphins. I'm going with the Eagles. Will Alex pick the Dolphins for the fifth week in a row? I will not be picking the Dolphins. It's the Eagles. We have the four and seven Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the four and seven Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm. And I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ah, This is such a tough one. I don't like either one of these teams. I I, I mean, do. No, but like, I mean, I'm talking about (laughs) as far as the quality of their play. (laughs) I'm going to go Jaguars here just because they're playing at home. I feel like this is a coin flip game. Is it really? I I, I don't know because I haven't paid attention, but. Is it really like a home game, or is it a split crowd? It, it'll be split. It'll yeah. it'll be split. I mean, home game, obviously, because they're playing in Jacksonville, but I mean, like, yeah, fans. Yeah, like, I, I will tell you, like, when the Jaguars aren't good, it gets pretty split pretty quick. So, like, I went to a Colts-Jaguars game in Jacksonville, and I was in disbelief how many Colts game, fans were there. So. Was it Peyton Manning era? No, it was the it was the Andrew Luck era. Wait, no. It was the year Peyton Manning was hurt. So they were pretty bad. Yeah. But yeah. We have the two and nine Washington Redskins at the five and six Carolina Panthers. Go with the Carolina Panthers. Uh man, the Redskins looked really good the other day though. Um, but I'm going to go with the Panthers. We have the 10 and 1 San Francisco 49ers, the 9 and 2 Baltimore Ravens game of the week. I think the Ravens would win, but I'm going with the Niners. I'm going Ravens. 
the Los Angeles Rams at the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> if the Cardinals win, the 49ers clinch the playoffs. Fun fact. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm going Cardinals too, man. I, there's just so much to be excited about in Arizona. I'm really happy for their fan base. Kyler Murray's keeping them in every single game. The 4-7 and seven Los Angeles Chargers at the 3-8 and eight Denver Broncos. I'm going to go with the Broncos. God, it. what happened to the Chargers? There was so much promise. I'm going Broncos. And then the complete opposite side of the same division, the good side. We have the 6-5 and five Oakland Raiders at the 7-4 and four Kansas City Chiefs going with the Chiefs. Raiders. We have the 10-1 and one Patriots at the 7-4 and four Texans. Going with the Texans. I'll go Patriots. Eight and three Vikings at nine and two Seahawks. Go want the Seahawks. The Vikings have to win this game. Seattle never looks good in a win. I, I think the Vikings can pull. Yeah, I'm going Vikings. Dead Chow do episode number fifty seven. Well, Alexander. Yep, that's uh, that's gonna do it for DCD fifty seven. So um, as always, want to tell you guys about t shirt link. It's in the description. Um, on every platform, if you buy a t-shirt, we get like six bucks and you get a DCD t-shirt. So everybody wins and, um, helps out the podcast. In addition, um, patreon.com slash DCD podcast. You get early access to the podcast and all kinds of other perks starting at a dollar a month. Uh, so, you know, if you're getting 25 cents of entertainment out of each episode, you know, like maybe just, maybe just kick in a dollar. Um, want to thank all of our current Patreon backers, Dumbest Sphinx in the egg tier, Bobby in the Andy tier, and Jared and Daniel in the gold tier. Uh, we really appreciate your support. You guys are literally the one thing keeping this podcast going because it's it's getting pretty expensive um, just because of hosting costs, you know. Anyway, um, and all that video editing that yeah. I have to do every week. We get catering all the time. It's really expensive. We do, yeah. Like, we get... <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i order an uber i i order a mcdouble from uber eats because you know it's I, I pay more for the delivery I than i do for the seven dollars i spent seven dollars on one mcdouble yeah <laughs> that's so ridiculous but uh yeah it happens sometimes i guess to some people uh anyway uh what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah. You could leave us a review on iTunes. That's completely free. Or you could subscribe to us on YouTube. That's also completely free. And then um, if you want to see what other platforms we're on, go to deadchannelduo.com. Right there at the top has a link to every single platform you can find us. Andy, anything else you want to Follow us on about? Letterboxd. Letterboxd.com yeah. forward slash Andy Holsey. And I don't know yours. It, so. I, I don't. I think it's Purple Swordfish, all one word. Your name but, on it is Alexander Aldridge. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm pretty sure it's Purple Swordfish, all one word. But um, that's also in the link. or uh, I'm sorry. There's also yeah. a link in the description where you can find us on there as well. Uh, it's a really and cool it, app. You get to see what we rate stuff. Yeah. So. Go watch The Irishman. Yeah. Even though it's long, go watch it. Yeah, go, go watch it out. Like, support new stuff new ideas in in film but yeah that's gonna do it thanks for listening guys we'll see you next week for dcd 58 bye that was a sad one <laughs>